as Moose here back for episode 10 of our West Ham United Karima. And we've got some big games come up for you. You might think, big games? You're playing QPR and then you're playing Watford. Who cares? It's big games, I'm telling you. We're coming up. This is the Capital One Cup. This is why we're taking on QPR. Obviously, they're in the championship right now. But we want to get some players some game time. Antonio's going to get in the game. Moses. Players like that. We want to see what they can offer to the team. If they can work their way into the starting line. That's what you guys said in the comments. Give Song, Valencia, guys like that some game time in these cup matches. And just see if they can break back into the first team. That's why you see guys like Song, Obiang, Antonio. Valencia, Andy Carroll starting up top, O'Brien, Oxford, Colin Song. We've pretty much rotated the whole team, Randolph's in as keeper. So we've really rotated. We'll see youngster Oxford get in to have a chance to prove himself. He's been developing so nicely in training. We just want to see how he can do against a championship side that was in the Premier League last year. So they still have some good players. And Nua, Charlie Austin's going to be dangerous up front, of course. Phillips and Hoylet on the wings, Leroy Fair in the middle. So they have some decent, decent players. No question we're going to have to compete with that. But Valencia plays a lovely ball to Tompkins. It's great ball movement. Tompkins decides to hit it. James Tompkins, he scored a wonder goal. Oh, my word. James Tompkins has just pulled an absolute screamer out of his locker. What a finish that is from the right back. Um, he's just put together an unbelievable turn. You'd have thought Valencia would have been the one to score, but his pass got deflected away only as far as Tompkins. On the turn, he just decides to hit it, and he boshes it into the top corner of the net. That is absolute. Just a stunner from James Tompkins. He's got the captain's armband. It's just taking him to a whole nother level because what a goal that is. One of the best goals you'll see all season that comes from a defender. It's just an absolute peach of a finish. And just like that, we're up 1-0. But a free kick for Moses in the 16th minute with a chance to make it 2-0. And it's a good save from the former West Ham goalkeeper who's in for QPR, Rob Green. Great tackle, though, from Reese Oxford here in the 36th minute. Showing off some fantastic defensive qualities. That's why he looks so strong strong for us uh, in, you know, a limited role in cup matches and what have you, but that was a great performance. Valencia with a good chance in the 41st minute. I've played him in uh, sort of a more central role here uh, just to try and get him more touches on the ball, and we'll see what he can then create. But Carroll's flicked the ball back as far as Tompkins. Can he hit another screamer? No, he's laid off to Valencia. Fake shot. Gets around one man. Decides to hit it, and it's right into the hands of Rob Green. So finally, Valencia having a few chances at goal, but he's not been able to crack through uh, and bag his first goal of the season yet, but we are going to make things a bit easier. QPR, uh, Sherry, shown a straight red card. He had actually been booked already earlier in the match, so if nothing else, he was going to get a second yellow, but he gets a straight red card for just a silly challenge on Tompkins from behind, and it's going to make things a little bit easier for us as we try and range forward and get that second goal to really put things out of reach. And can we get here? Valencia lays off to Obiang. Oh, he strikes it from range and just misses the post. But another chance coming forward. Tompkins finds Alex Song in the center of the park. He lays off to Obiang. Oh, Obiang oh, through to Valencia. He finds Carroll on the run. Obiang's oh, continued its run through. He picks up the ball in through the defense, and he just slides it. Beautiful little touch on it from the Spaniard. And he gives us the 2-0 lead. What a finish. Uh, it's his first ever goal in a West Ham United shirt. And what a time to pick it up. Just puts the game out of reach. Carroll plays him through. Lovely job to stay with it. And it's a cool, composed finish from the holding midfielder. Very, very nice. He had the finish of a striker there. I'll tell you what. But a great goal from Obiang. It's 2-0. Out of reach. QPR decide, oh, we're going to try and get one back here as Obiang then gives the ball back there. I think it was Alex Song went in for a tackle. Excuse me. Yeah, Alex Song picks up a book in. It's a tough call there from the referee, but I think he did have it correct in giving the penalty. So QPR with potentially a lifeline to get back into this match in the 85th minute. Charlie Austin, Texas, the man to step up and take it, and he smashes it in off the underside of the bar. QPR with a potential chance to get that equalizer, but I'm for, well, fortunately for us, unfortunately for them, they do not. We're moving on in the Capital One Cup. It's a 2-1 victory. Sorry, Rob Green. Uh, thank you for all your service as a hammer, but we had to knock you out of the cup. Great finish. 2-1 uh, on the strength of a Tompkins beauty and a lovely finish from Albion. For me, man of the match had to be James Tompkins. He was stupendous, an absolute rock at the back. Uh, just a dominating player, and of course he scored that wonder goal. Two points in Moose Mahir, but actually went to our other goal scorer, Pedro Obiang, who I thought was very solid. He definitely outshone his more uh, pedigreed midfield partner in Alex Song, and one point went to Victor Moses for me, who I thought also played a very, very dangerous game, did very well. You can see, looking at the table, we have gotten into the quarterfinals alongside Stoke City, uh, either uh, Manchester United and Derby County. We have four more matches to go to see who we will be facing in the quarterfinals. But 
after that, you can see we're currently sitting joint top of the table with London rivals Tottenham Hotspur. So a win here away at Watford. We're coming off of a massive uh, home victory against Chelsea. Now we have to head away to Vicarage Road to take on newly promoted Watford. They've looked all right this season. They have been up and down very, very much, you have to say. So I think they're definitely going to be motivated to come out here and put on a show for their fans and come away with a, a famous victory. Honestly, you have to say it's just West Ham in some people's mind, but we are top of the table. We're playing very, very well. They have some really good players. Gidora Igala has been fantastic. Birami and Kapua in midfield, very, very strong. Holobus, always a danger on the left side of defense. He used to play for Roma. For us, Saka reinstated. Payet, Lanzini, all our normal starters are back in the team. The normal starting level we go with, and hopefully they can do the job for us. We do have guys like Carroll, Albiang, etc. on the bench if we would need them. But Payet gets off to a great start here in the 12th minute. Plays Sacco 3, goes to strike it, and Diafra just hasn't found his shooting boots this year. He's not been banging them in like he was last season. We need him to get off the mark so we don't have to rely on Dimitri Payet so much because you can see if he does get injured, I think we have the squad depth to... to you know, do very well in the league still, but he's really been the catalyst for everything. And Watford, as I'm talking here, they take a 1-0 lead. Steven Bergwies with a lovely finish. It's a poor clearance. It's played in. Jenkinson goes to head it away. Unfortunately, he has it right down to Bergwies, who takes it down on his chest and puts a lovely finish past Adrian. But we're trying to come back in the 17th minute now. Aaron Cresswell lays it into our captain, Mark Nome. He finds Dimitri Payet always on the ball is Dimitri. He's just been so dominant for us. He finds Moses, lays it back, looking for Payet. It's knocked away. It just Squibs around. Payet strike is saved. Another chance is eventually cleared by the Watford defense as far as Lanzini, and that would do it. But Keontae with a great slide tackle finds Diafra Sacco. Sacco lays in Payet and Dimitri Payet. We've got Payet. Dimitri Payet. What a player he is. Super slabs, man. Better than Zidane. We've got Dimitri Payet. What a player. I'll tell you what. It's an easy goal. There's no question about it. It's going to be the easiest goal he scored all year. It's made by the pressure from Keate. Great pass from Sacco, and it's such an easy finish. But it's a player that deserves it. He's created so many chances that he deserves an easy one to go in now and again. And that time he did. Fantastic finish. But Watford looking to come back the other way. Great ball in for Igalo. And he does beat an on-rushing Adrian. It's just an absolute sucker punch right back to our jaws. After taking that draw, you know, taking it into halftime and right away Watford with their first chance of the second half it's a great finish from Paredes excuse me it was Paredes not Igala who scored but very cultured easy header into the back of the net Adrian with no chance and just like that we're playing from behind yet again this is not the way we want to be shaping around Payet with a great chance but a very good tackle by the Watford man to keep out our superstar Dimitri Moses now in the 69th minute plays into Diaz for a second he's found Lanzini through he goes to strike he's brought down referee has to award a free kick and he does could even been a red card as you would say that was the last man back before the keeper but unfortunately for us it's just going to be a free kick and this is a dangerous position Dimitri Payet on the ball we know the quality he has from the free kick spot 19 yards you might say it's even too close for him and it is a bit he puts it through the wall off of a defender and it's a simple save for the Watford keeper but they're looking for that goal to put things out of reach great ball into Bergwies looking for a second and Adrian with a heroic save big hands from the Spanish goalkeeper keeps the ball another chance though with Ibarbo on the ball turns inside to Bergwies strikes it and Adrian no problem on that one 86 second minute now Watson uh, I think it was Watson we'll have to see from the referee here but he takes out Victor Moses from behind Moses looks like he's a bit of pain oh excuse me it was Ghidorah Ghidorah takes out Victor Moses and we will be playing against 10 men for the final nine minutes as we search for that equalizer good ball and Zarate's taken out the ball finds its way back to the defense here with Winston Reed he heads it into Lanzini can we create anything here Manuel looking for a bit of space goes to Sacco he strikes it and it's nowhere near the goal and the referee would blow his full-time whistle. That's going to be it. Unfortunately, we do fall to Watford 2-1. to one. So our first actual league defeat comes to newly promoted Watford. What a turn of events. Not what we would have expected. But you have to give, or you have to give him credit. You know, with all the victories against teams like Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, uh, this is not who you would have expected to give up that first loss to. But credit to them for a great performance. Man, the match for me was Diafra Sacco. Gets three moves to my hero points. I thought he was very, very good 
uh, contribute, of course, to the Payette goal. Payette does get two points in the Moose Mighty Hammer Bung, and one point goes to Carl Jenkinson, who, in spite of his mistake early on in the match that led to Watford's first goal, I thought played very, very well. For us, you can see, uh, we have brought in some nice players to our Youth Academy, Connor Nelson, Joe Gray, Leandro Aldair, we did get with a Sky Future Star from Brazil, looks unbelievable, and Fuentes as well looks fantastic in the center of the park. So we'll finish the episode up by looking at our two latest scouting reports, and that's going to close out the episode. We do bring in one or two more players. We bring in the Vassal brothers, Hayden and John uh, from England. Hopefully they can turn it up and be a couple of players we'll see breaking into the squad eventually. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Your support always means a ton to me. Sure to leave a like uh, so I know you are enjoying the content. Comment if there's anything you want me to, to improve upon. If there's any ideas you have. Uh, if you just want to give me feedback on the episode, if you liked it, anything like that, always grateful to hear about. And of course, subscribe so you can see new episodes, guys. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I get to shine, to shine, to shine, to shine, to shine.